All right, so now that we've added the basic functionality to our app, which is simply displaying some text from Array into a table view, the next step is to set it up so that we can start making some in-app purchases. Now, in order to do that, I'm going to add a cell at the very bottom of all of our quotes that says, buy more quotes. And when I click on that cell, it's going to trigger the in-app purchasing uh, process. So first things first, currently we're only loading up six cells because we're looking at quotes to show and we're looking at the count, which is six. Now, if we want to add that extra cell, then all we have to do is just add one. And now we'll always have one extra cell on top of all the cells we need to show the quotes. So now that we have seven cells, but we only have data for six of them. So what we can do here is we can add an if statement that checks if the index path dot row of the cell that we're trying to render the content for is less than quotes to show dot count, then we're going to populate it with text from the array that's quotes to show. But if it's greater than that number, namely, if we've hit that last cell where index path is equal to six. So remember, we start counting from zero. So this one has an index path dot row of zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. And that one is going to have a special cell text. So cell dot text label dot text is going to equal get more quotes. And this is going to be our main buy button. So in order to show that it's different from the rest of the cells, we're going to change its text color. So cell.textlabel.textcolor equals a blue color. And we're going to use a color literal here. So if you start typing color and you can see you've got color literal being suggested, go ahead and double click on it and you'll get a little square. And now if you double click on the square, we get a color picker, including our recently used colors. So I'm going to stick to the color that I've got in the theme of this app, which is that kind of green, bluey, turquoise color. I'm not very good at describing colors, um, but that one. And you can, of course, choose whatever it is that you wish, but make sure that it's visible. And then we're going to change the cells accessory type to something called a disclosure indicator. And this has a control shaped like a chevron, so like a little right angle bracket. And this control indicates the user that tapping the cell triggers an action. So that means that we can use this to indicate to the user that you can actually press on the cell and something will happen. So let's go ahead and run our app and see what that looks like so far. So we currently have six quotes and the very last cell is this button that says get more quotes with our little disclosure indicator and our text color being the same as this one, which looks pretty neat, I think. All right, so now that we're done with that, the next step is to detect a touch on that cell. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete all of the rest of this comment and template code that Apple gave us because it's not very useful and we're going to write it ourselves. So currently we've got a pragma mark up here. That's the table view data source method. And I'm just going to copy it and create another one down here, which are going to be the table view delegate methods. And one of the main delegate methods that we use all the time is of course, table view did select row at index path. And you can see that you've got two methods being suggested and they look pretty much identical on here. Now they are actually not identical because if I hit enter on the top one, you can see that I get a normal function being auto suggested here. And I will also get an error saying that I need to put the override keyword. Now, whereas if I chose the one that is the second one in that list, then I get that override keyword for free. Now, 
If you remember, the reason why we need that override keyword is because we're inheriting from UI table view controller. And that class already has the method table view did select row at index path. And we're overriding its functionality to provide our own functionality. So this is the line of code that we need. So inside here, we're going to check to see if the row that was selected has a index path dot row of the last item in this table view. So that is again going to be number six because zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. And that is going to be equal to the number of quotes to show. So if index path dot row is equal to quotes to show dot count, then in that case, we're pretty certain that this button got pressed and then we're going to do something special. Before we do anything special, let's just check to make sure it works. Let's write print by quotes clicked and let's hit run. And now if I click on this one, you can see by quotes clicked. Perfect. So it's now working. If this line of code is at all confusing to you and why we're using quotes to show dot count, then make sure that you haven't skipped any of the lectures before and that you have completed all of the previous modules before you got to this current module. I know that it's really tempting to just go straight for the one that you really need right now, but without understanding everything, it's very difficult to implement this into your own app. So I recommend going through all of the modules in the order that they are in the curriculum. It's really important. I can't stress enough that you don't skip the modules. Okay, either way, we've now determined that the last button got clicked and we can delete this print statement. And now this is the place where we are going to implement the buying of our in-app purchase. So I'm going to call a method called buy premium quotes. And this method doesn't yet exist. So let's go ahead and create it down here. Now, in order to create it, I'm going to create a new section. So I'm going to create a new pragma mark. And this one is going to be called the in-app purchase methods. And here I'm going to create that function called buy premium quotes. And let's just make sure that we've spelt it right by checking to see that this actually changes color and we don't get any errors by hitting command B to just force a build and compile our, of our code to make sure that everything is working. Okay, so now when the user clicks on this button, then this part triggers and this function will get called. Now there's just one slight problem here and that's when you press on this button, the cell does not get deselected automatically. And it looks a bit weird because normally when you click on a cell, it should turn gray and then quickly turn back to white. That looks a lot better than having it permanently selected. And we can of course get rid of that by simply adding a line of code that says table view dot deselect row at index path. And that's of course the current index path animated true. And now when we select that cell, it will deselect itself automatically with a quick animation. And that just makes it so much nicer in terms of the user experience. Okay, so in this lesson, we have set up our cell that has the text of get more quotes. We've changed its color and disclosure indicator to make it look like it's clickable. And we've also got a delegate method that gets triggered when it gets pressed and we're using it to trigger a function called buy premium quotes so that we can start processing their in-app purchases. Now in the next lesson, we're going to be looking at StoreKit and the StoreKit API in order to query the Apple databases and implement the code to buy our premium quotes in-app purchase. So for all of that and more, I will see you on the next lesson.